And oh, what a chore it is to get to you. <laughs> Here's my experience. I, I deal with it daily, and you may find the same thing happening yourself. You're all cool, you're smart, happening, get, you all got dressed by yourself. <laughs> got your hair care products together, you're looking sharp, you look great tonight. You got down here unaided, you know, you didn't have to have your mom hold your hand to get in here. What happens to you, us, them, no, not anyone in here under this roof, way too cool. <laughs> under this roof, we're all fucking Einstein. <laughs> it's out there, the idiots. And where do they all go? The airport. Those who cannot figure out simple things, like holding your picture ID and your ticket at the same time, giving them to the lady behind the counter. This is really simple stuff. Day to day, I'm doing these shows. Every morning, I go into a huge building full of idiots. And I think it's the mentality of lines. Standing in lines, people's IQs plummet. He's a rocket scientist, he's a rocket scientist, he goes up to the counter at United, he's playing with his poo-poo outside the 7-Eleven, he's a fucking moron. And where are these people always located? In front of me. Why can't they have like the dummy line? Why can't you have to pass some kind of test? Do you know that you have to take out your driver's license or a passport to get your ticket to get... I do. He falls through the floor. He goes downstairs and has to board with all these other idiots. Really sharp, cool folks get to go boom, boom, boom and just get right to the airplane. I'm trapped by morons. Okay, here's the first thing that happens. I go in, the first thing is I'm trapped in line, idiots in front of me. I see the guy ahead of me and how long does it take to show your ID and give the ticket? Did you check all your luggage yourself? No one put anything in there for you to carry? No. Has it been in your position at all times? Yes. Great. And you're one way, how many pieces of luggage? One. Chunk, thank you, have a nice flight. Time, 41 seconds. We're out of there. The guy ahead of me, one, I'm, you know, stopwatch, like, mark, you know. <laughs> Minute 10, two minutes, and then he does that thing where he like kind of sags and leans on the thing. <sighs> and then you know you're in deep shit when the lady leaves. She takes him and she's like, no, no, don't go away. No, no, come back. No, fuck it, I'll help. How about I just club him like a baby seal and get him out of your way? Okay? And you see that ass standing in front of you. And the only thing you can think of is just putting your foot up as, as hard as you can. He's one like, ay! Poof! And just fucking knock him right into the wall. And you'll be like, get him. Ow, what'd you do that for? Because you're too fucking stupid to get on an airplane. Go back home! For you, you may think I'm a little uptight. You may think, like, God, man, why don't you fucking mellow out? What's your fucking problem? Here's my problem with this, okay? Our lives are very short. You never know when someone's gonna take it away, okay? You have, what, 20, 30, 40, 50 more years. I hope you have a very long life, but you never know when you're gonna get hit by that car, you're gonna fall in the manhole, you're gonna get some kind of horrible disease, and boom, you're dead. You're mangled. You know, you're, you're pissing out of a fucking tube into a bag. Something horrible happens to you. And not one second of your life do you get back. I'm gonna catch up on some sleep. You don't catch up on sleep. I'm gonna catch up on some reading. Either read or don't, but you can't catch up. You do what you fucking do and that's all you get, okay? I wish in litigation, in court proceedings, you could sue for time. I get five years off your life. What would you rather have in a car accident when you like lose your leg? Five more years or like three million dollars? I'd rather take the time, okay? I'd rather have more time. I'd rather get five years off this prick's life who inconvenienced me. So. What I'm basically getting to, when the guy takes an extra two minutes ahead of me, oh, two minutes, what's your problem? Two, two minutes of time I don't get for myself. He's murdering me, but just a little. <laughs> He's murdering me with a very tiny little knife. It's like, ah, 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 ah. Okay, it's like murder in the millionth degree. Tiny little increments of time are being torn away from me. And I hate this guy, and I don't know him, and I don't know what the problem is. All I know is it's really fucking easy to get on the plane. And I go up there trying to be a, an example to the rest of these boneheads behind me. I go up there, I photo ID, and I'm ready for the questions. Like, go ahead, hit me. <laughs> Have your possessions with you all the times? 
Affirmative. <laughs> Do the other one. If I had any, I'm taking anything for somebody else to take on the trip. Go ahead, go ahead, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, time me this lady, come on. Have you, you know, did you take me? No! Stamp it, I'm out of here! 22 seconds, you fucking idiots! Okay. And I, I just gash off to the next obstacle. The metal detector. I'm in line to go through the metal detector. What does the metal detector detect? Metal. Can't we figure out that coins and keys and all kinds of shit is made out of metal? No? Well, I can, but the businessman in the nice three-piece suit and the Brooks Brothers outfit and the nice shoes and the $150 briefcase can't seem to do it, and he's always in line ahead of me. Goes through, ee, makes the U-turn, sir, uh, do you have any, your keys? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, my key. Digs into his pocket, pulls out keys like a janitor or a jailer. Like 12 pounds, big-ass ring of keys. Everyone looks, whoa, that's a lot of keys, man. You know, surprised he didn't pull his pants down to his ankles. So he goes, okay, here I go again. And I'm timing him. This, this, this should take no time. You should not even break pace. Throw your briefcase on the thing, walk through, don't set it off, grab your thing, go on to your fucking gate. Oh no, not this guy. And I'm standing behind him going, I really want to go, I really want to go, I don't have any change or keys in my pocket because I know it's a fucking metal detector. <laughs> Did this 80 times like everybody else. He goes through again. Eep. Sir, uh, any other metal objects in your pocket? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I have some change. Pulls out of his pocket nine, ten weeks worth of laundry quarters. <laughs> On Twelve pounds of quarters. Everyone's impressed. Like, that's a lot of change. <laughs> Another two minutes have been taken off my life. He finally goes in. And I just feel it. I really want to give him a foot up the ass. I ace right through him. <laughs> Grab the backpack. I don't even like, stop walking. My, I'm, I know what to do with a metal detector. I mean, this isn't rocket science. It's a fucking metal detector. Okay, I know. Maybe I'm overreacting, but on a day-to-day -day basis, getting barraged by dum-dums, it's just more than a man can bear. Then we have the I am too chicken shit to check in my luggage, so I'll take a fucking overseas steamer on the plane and try and wedge it above the seat, but I can't do it. So I'll stand in the fucking aisle for 90 minutes while everyone else stands there like a bump on a log waiting to sit down. Or when they finally do cram the thing in there with the help of three other people, no one can figure out how to sit down in 13A. They walk in the aisle, they're holding their little boarding stub like it's delicate information. And they look hopelessly lost. They look at it and look up. Look at it and look up. I feel like grabbing them by the back of their collar, taking the thing. Okay, watch. 11, 12, 13. See? A, B, A, B, A, B. Sit the fuck down! Shut the fuck up! Which I think should be one of the, the two little lights up there. They have like the, the seatbelt icon and the don't smoke icon. They should have the sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up light. Because I don't know about you. Maybe it's not only my experience. Maybe because I'm overreacting, you know, bad karma boy. But it's always my experience. I'm sitting in the aisle seat, so I have easy access to the men's room if I need to go in there. And the guy gets up from his seat and he has to have the long, drown out conversation about his friend's laptop. He's bending over with that big bubble butt, looking at his friend's laptop. I make a right turn with my face. My nose gets stuck in the guy's ass crack. I'm stuck. I can't get loose. And you, you ever heard guys like talk about their computers, like they're talking about their cars, like they're talking about the sex they had? Oh, that's a, that's a 604E microprocessor chip in there. That, oh, that's fast as hell, that thing. Uh. Wow, that active screen is really pitching. Yeah, well, yeah, I got a 4 gig car drive in my life. Yeah, uh-huh. I feel something tingling in my ass. Well, anyway, when we get to Nebraska, we're going to kick ass on those carpet sales. We're going to sell those guys a whole bunch of carpet. Give it up. High five it. Okay. Meanwhile, I'm like... And then, ding, the sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up light goes on. Ladies and gentlemen, the pilot has instructed everyone to sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up. Well, Don, I gotta go, I gotta go see you. Sit the fuck down, shut the fuck up. Oh, sorry, man. Is your face okay? Okay, well, uh, I gotta go. I endure these morons, surrounded by them. Get out of the plane. My next boondoggle, my next obstacle in my path towards an efficient, straight path to baggage claim. The moving sidewalk. 
We all know what the moving sidewalk is. It is the long band of rubber or metal that goes about the speed of the hu average human gait, the average human pace, maybe a little bit faster. You're supposed to get on it and walk, thus increasing your ambulatory efficiency as you get to baggage claim. Why do people get on it and stand like a stuffed animal? They get on it and they sag. <sighs> and it, if you stood and watched, it's like the humans on display. They just kind of go by. <laughs> And these people are content to stand still on a little conveyor belt for like 400 yards, like a quarter mile. And they all had this talk, I'm so tired. Uh, what have you been doing? Sitting on my ass for three hours in the plane. Oh, I'm so worn out. Life is so hard. Oh, I am jamming on this thing. I'm up on the balls of my feet, throwing my soul forward, trying to get a rhythm going on the belt so I'm propelled forward. As, you know, so I can be at baggage claim first, so I can wait the longest. I don't know how that logic works out, but I gotta be there first. So I am steaming down this thing. Anyone not walking, who's not way up on the side looking out for Mr. Efficiency is immediately my enemy. You know, time murderer. I see it as a threat to my life, the, even if it's an old woman. Old woman with her shopping bag, God damn it! I want to see her flying. I want to see, I want to see her fall and not get up, you know. And so the folks are like, oh yeah, going along, and I'm just bounding, just heading for glory. And they start feeling this rhythm. God, what's that? My goodness. Then it gets more insistent, and all of a sudden they are airborne, flying, <laughs> luggage flying from their grip briefcases exploding with paper and laptop computers and calculators all over the place. Men flying, ties sticking out, landing in heaps. All they hear is, man, get the fuck out of my way. And that's me clotheslining with my backpack. <laughs> As I club and fight my way to baggage claim. And so I get to baggage claim. I'm the first guy there. I go right to the mouth of where the luggage comes out. So I'm like, Ready, I'm so ready. Three minutes later, you see the casualties limping, walking into baggage claim, holding their arms like, ow. Holding onto their briefcase, paper all fucked up, pointing, it was him. Him, old woman holding her hip, she's all, oh God, this mean man. And I'm standing like, waiting, I'm so ready, you know? And this always happens. I'm standing there waiting. There's a guy next to me, some blue suitcase. Comes down, goes by. We both look at it. Not mine, I know what my shit looks like. Yeah. Three minute lap comes through the mouth of the baggage thing again. We both look at it. Three minutes later, comes through again. The guy goes, grabs it! Hey! And leaves. What were the first two laps all about? When he was staring at it, letting it go. Was he waiting for the mood to be right? What was he, what's going through his mind? I want to interview the guy. Like, what kind of fucking idiot are you? Okay, and then the other situation happens where I'm the last guy to get my luggage. I'm waiting, everyone's gone, and my luggage finally comes out. It's on the conveyor belt with like nine other pieces of luggage. Where are these people? I don't remember anyone dying on my flight. I don't remember anyone jumping out the window. You know, where are they? You know where they are? Halfway home in a cab, or like picked up by their wives, girlfriends, husbands, boyfriends, whatever. Honey, I... You forget... You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> On the overpass, back out to the airport, you know, get the luggage. This is what I do every day just to be here. By the time I get out of the airport, I'm so fucking enervated. Today, I really was bad. Walked out of the plane, just started mouthing off. Fucking simple-minded motherfuckers just started looking at people and fucking started dealing on them. Bunch of fucking stupid fucking people. And, you know, these, these poor people are just going to their flight. They don't know who I am, and they don't deserve this kind of treatment. This is just the kind of prick I can be. 